name is Lewis Smith III. My branch of service was the Army. My job description was 75 Bravo, Personnel Administration Specialist. And my time of service was from September 30th, 1992 until September 30th, 1996. I'm gonna discuss my time in the service and I'm gonna discuss how I use humor to transition from the military to civilian life. Anyone who's ever been to the military, there's a certain camaraderie we all have. We are a brotherhood and we are sincerely uh, uh, dedicated to taking care of ourselves and each other and taking care of our country. Transferring from the military to the civilian sector of life, for a lot, it's not an easy transition. It, people say the military is hard, which I, I must say, yes, it is. It's not a very easy lifestyle to live. However, it does spoil you. There are things that you get used to in the military that when you get into the civilian sector, those things just aren't there anymore. The, the care, the love, the esprit de corps, so to speak, the camaraderie that we all have as soldiers, the civilian sector in no place I've ever lived is like that. So that's an adjustment that we all have to prepare and, and get ready for when you transition into the civilian world. When I was in the military, I, I've always naturally been funny. So I was the jokey guy, you know, the soldier that everybody knew. My nickname was Smitty. So, you know, last name Smith. So everybody called me Smitty. And I was like, you know, the jokey, funny guy. I took that because I knew I had something. I moved to New York when I got out of the military, attended the American Comedy Institute taught by Steve Rosenfeld. And April 12th of 1997, I got on stage and I knew that day that there was no other career choice for me besides stand-up comedy. I grew up in an American household, regular black folk, white folk, you know what I'm saying? The thing I liked about white folks is they didn't give their kids these silly nicknames that black parents give us. I'm serious. You know, check out my name, my legal name. My legal name by itself has a good credit score. Lewis O'Neill Smith III. <laughs> Good old American boy, right? My nickname is Lurky. <laughs> My influences are definitely Eddie Murphy, as well as Richard Pryor, Robin Williams, and it's a host of other great, talented stand-up comedians that have influenced me. But the one who has influenced me the most, the person who I've somewhat idolized my entire life, has been Eddie Murphy. When I first started stand-up in 1997, I was a scared little pup. I basically was on stage running around doing a lot of antics, uh, trying to per se shock the crowd or get them on my side, afraid of not being accepted. Within the past 20 plus years that I've been doing stand up, I now have learned to basically craft my set around the realities of life. I talk about things from being a parent, being parented, politics, uh, life and death. There's so many different subjects that are funny now and able to be brought to the stage. Writing a good joke has many different facets to it. If I would like to, per se, write a joke just to, uh, a filler joke just to get some space in between, I can either ad lib or I can set something up and make sure that it has a basic setup a premise and a punch. Any joke book, any comedian will tell you, you need your setup because you need to make, make the, the subject familiar. That's your setup. The premise is what happens. And the punchline is what we like to call the magic trick. The punchline is where the joke takes the route that makes you laugh. That's the punchline. There's an old saying that laughter is the best medicine. I have a college education. I'm honorably discharged from the military. But I wanna truly say that the most healing that I've been able to do, the pleasure that I've been able to give people through stand-up comedy, it's, it's almost the work of a superhero. I consider myself a doctor, somewhat as like I would say a doctor feel good, so to speak, because when I'm on stage and people are laughing, you don't know how many times people have come up to me after the shows and said, 
man, I was in some type of mood or I was upset or women are like, I, I was, I was about to, you know, just kill everybody in the house. And then after watching you, I laughed so hard. Laughter brings you, brings a sense of joy back to your life. So no matter how crazy, because th things are crazy. I mean, look at what we're dealing with now, the coronavirus and just the, the, the climate of, of our country right now. Things are crazy. But what comedy does is it brings the joy back to life. So no matter what mood you're in, no matter, no matter how you feel, it, when, it, when it comes to, to, to laughing, I've heard people even say that uh, comedy has cured their cancer. They just put comedies on and start watching comedies and just finding the joy in life. Now, for me personally, I'm going through a custody battle right now. I've suffered a stroke. I've had, uh, I lost my mother in 1997 to cancer. But there is nothing that gives me the euphoric feeling of here I am, of the human touch the way comedy does. I really enjoy being, I would like to say, per se, in an awkward position, something that I'm not used to because it brings out the best in me. It, it's a question I have for myself. How talented are you? How good of an entertainer are you? So therefore, when it comes to changing my material or catering to the audience in front of me, I embrace that. I don't run from it. I run to it. I do shows all over the country, man, all over the world. I have a good time. One time I was in a place, I'm not going to name it, but this freaky woman came up to me after the show. She said, Trey Love, I enjoyed your comedy so much, I'm going to take you back to my place and I want to do something ignorant to you. I said, you know what, woman? I don't know what kind of energy you picked up from me or what kind of vibe you thought you had from me. I said, but you figured it out. Let's go. Right now, I'm in the midst of completing my book. It's called The Father's Flight. I'm discussing... It's somewhat autobiographical, but it's also a self-help book to assist men with custody issues. I noticed that a lot of men, because I put it out there, you know, on social media and other platforms that I'm dealing with a custody issue, and a lot of men are very quiet. They're silent about their pain. And this is something especially we as veterans go through. We, we suffer, but we suffer in silence. I'm not that guy. I can't suffer in silence because I've worked too hard and I've done too much in order to better myself and make myself a better human being for me to have to suffer in silence. So I noticed that when I put the information out there, guys will hit me on the inbox and they'll talk to me on the inbox, but they don't want anyone to know what they're going through, which is understandable. People, you know, especially men, we have a lot of pride. We want to keep our business, you know, to ourselves. But I say to anyone, don't be afraid to reach out for help. There's help for you. You know, reach for help and someone will, will reach and give you that life wrap and assist you in becoming a better person. And that's something that I literally just spend my life trying to do. Every day I try to do at least better than I did yesterday. Recently, I've been putting out motivational videos because I'm starting to get more into the motivational speaking side of things, the motivational comedy. And I say this to anybody, these are my words of wisdom, and please don't forget this. I, I want everybody to remember this. 100% of the shots that you don't take, you miss. So I say go for it. Life is, it's a one-time ride. You, you, we're only on this, on this life train for one ride. Don't stress about anything. We're gonna stress, that's life. But do your best not to stress about anything and live your life to the fullest and take every shot that you could possibly take. Because remember this, I'm gonna say it one more time. 100% of the shots that you don't take, that you don't take, you miss. So go for it, shoot 100. I guarantee you'll hit, you might even hit 10 out of 100, but that's 10 more than you would have got if you would have not taken a shot anyway. Thank you for having me. I'm really, I really enjoyed this. Like I said, I, anything to do with veterans, I'm 110% for it, man. We fought for this country and I believe we should fight for each other and, you know, keep doing things like this. This is very important. So thank you.